is multiplying by the reciprocal of a multi-story fraction. So that's something you've probably done for quite a while. So we're going to move on to, let's see. Let's write down strategies first, and then we'll start applying them. So normally what I would do is write strategies on a separate board so we always have access to them. What I'm going to do for us right now is write all the strategies up here with all the things you need to memorize. So we'll have another box, and this will be all of our strategies. And let's see how many I can remember. All right, so what we just did was we started with cotangent cosecant, and we wrote in terms of sines and cosines. So that is one strategy. So I'll write in terms of sine and cosine. So usually this is going to be taking tangents, cotangents, secant, cosecants, turning them into sines and cosines. So that is one strategy. When we do identities, when we go to prove things are equal, we're going to start on the more simple side. So or begin on the more complicated side. We can add fractions with common denominators. Now, of course, how do you add fractions? You add them with common denominators. I'm just writing that out so you don't forget to do that. You can multiply. And this one is less obvious by conjugate over conjugate. And I feel like there's a fifth strategy. Ah, factor. My favorite F word, of course. All right, so we got conjugates. And let's write down what conjugates are A minus B times A plus B. If you FOIL this out, you get a squared minus ab plus ab plus, no, minus b squared. So that should be very, very familiar FOILing right there. And of course, what cancels? AB, negative AB. So they're going to cancel out. So let's just be very terse, and we're just going to get this, basically. A squared minus B squared. So I'm just going to write it A squared minus B squared. Do not forget about conjugates. You're going to see them again and again, and this will save you 10 seconds or so. Um, also, it won't always be obvious you have conjugates. So a lot of times you're going to see something like x squared minus 4. Well, that's not really x squared minus something squared. How can I write this as x squared minus something squared? So it would be x squared minus 2 squared. And now I can very easily factor x plus 2, x minus 2. So it w you won't always see the terms as squared. But a lot of these you can turn into something squared. Now, if you remember way back to complex numbers, what is the, how, how can I write 1 as negative something squared? What can I put in parentheses here so these are equal? You got to go way back to last quarter. So i, what is i squared? Negative 1, and you're going to subtract it. So this is how to write a positive as 
uh, x squared plus 1 as uh, x squared minus something. So you do with an i, and of course then it's x minus i, x plus i. There we go. So these last two are just review here, so I'm going to go ahead and erase them. They're, they don't, hopefully you remember these. Certainly you should remember what I just erased right there. The eyes are a little bit more, more tricky. All right, so that is conjugate. And the last one is my favorite F word, which is factor. So there are the five strategies we're going to use. You're generally always going to begin on the complicated side. But other than that, there may not be fractions. You may not have any of these fact, uh, multiply by conjugate over conjugate. So we may not have fractions. So some of these may not be applicable. The only one I can say you'll almost always use is the uh, begin on complicated side. Although you'll see very quickly that a lot of these, both sides are complicated. So there's not necessarily one that's more complicated. All right, keep your strategies handy and keep all these identities handy as well. <clears throat> our next example, we're going to establish the identity. Actually, let's go with some more simplifying first. We'll do all of our simplifies. So we'll start with 1 plus sine u divided by sine u. plus cotangent u minus cosine u divided by cosine u. All right, when we simplify, there's no other side to it. So there's not a complicated or an easy side. So we're just going to uh, do our best to simplify this. So first of all, how do we add fractions? Common denominator. So that is certainly one thing we can do at first. So is there really anything in common with these fractions in their denominators? There's a u, but that's not really. So the best I can do is bas basically sine u times cosine u. That's going to be my best denominator here. So when in doubt with uh, adding fractions with common denominator, I'm just going to do a really, really fast review. I'm sorry if. This is super obvious. How do you add fractions in general? This will be AD plus BC over BD. So where did that come from? The intermediate step will be multiplied by D over D plus uh, multiplied by B over B. So there's the intermediate step right there. This should be pretty obvious. So we're going to use that common denominator quite a bit. And this is the situation we have right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the simplified version that, that I wrote down below. So I'm just saving a little bit of writing. So I need another cosine u in my denominator. So we get cos u sine u. 1 plus sine u times cos u plus cotangent minus cosine times sine. So again, all I did was common denominator. So I just did this right here. So my common denominator was a product of my originals. So we're supposed to simplify. That looks way more complicated. So go ahead and multiply, cancel, and make this as simple as you can. So I did the hard part, which is adding fractions. So go ahead and I think I see some things that cancel out right away. Get this as simple as you can. I'll give you 30 seconds.
That's a good question. Why did I cross those out in blue? Sine doesn't cancel cosine. So what I crossed out, this is really sine u times cosine u. So it's a sine u cos u. And then over here, I saw it was a minus cos u sine u. So I'm basically saving some, well, I'm not really saving paper, but I'm saving writing things onto this virtual paper. I'm saving you paper if you're taking notes. All right, so how did I signify that? I crossed out. It's a little weird because it looks like sine cancels cosine, but that's not actually what happened. Sine cosine canceled negative cosine sine. So I was very careful about what canceled out. Now what I didn't do, this cosine doesn't really cancel out. I still had to multiply cosine times the 1 over here. That did not go away. So that's how I got my cosine u down below. So there's my cosine u. And what else did I have on the right side? I still had a cotangent times regular sine. So again, I don't really want to cross that one out because I need to multiply it over to the cotangent. So if I am skipping more steps than you feel comfortable skipping, that's completely OK. What you want to do is write the intermediate step on your notes. Or put a little asterisk so you can come back and write it down later. So any other questions on this cosine plus cotangent sine? What else cancels out, or what else can I, how can I simplify further? So cotangent times sine. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So it's cosine over sine. You, if you're super good at identities, you can, can't, you can cross it out and write cosine in its place. But I'm going to go ahead and write down the steps to cancel it. So we got cos u plus cotangent is cos u over sine u times sine u. And now it's pretty easy to see sine cancels sine. So that sine cancels that sine. We get cos plus cos, which is 2 cos u divided by cos u sine u. All right, easy last step. What is it? <coughs> Cancel one of the cos u's. Well, we've got to be careful. Everything here is multiplied. So when I cancel the times cosine u, I also cancel the divided by cosine u. So they cancel out to basically be 1 right there. So I have 2 over sine u. This is pretty simple. There is one more way to write it. What if I don't like fractions? What is 1 over sine? Almost. Cosecant. So we got 2 cosecant u. I don't think it gets more simple than that. We just have 1 function times 2. It's a way better than we started with. Webber doesn't want secant as an answer. Uh, what if Webber doesn't want secant? Yeah. There's been then probably the 1 over sine I would try. Okay. Uh, one thing with a lot of these problems as they get more complicated is you want to look at the answer preview. If you get it wrong, there's a very good chance you typed it in wrong with parentheses. For example, if this was my final answer, let's just say that that was the final answer right there, I probably want to use uh, check the preview to make sure my fraction denominator is where I really think it is. There's a good chance uh, maybe I'm multiplying by this sign down here instead of dividing by it. So you want to go answer preview. There's a pretty good chance that typing it in wrong might be your problem. And then if you go through and redo all your math and take 10 minutes to redo all your math, realize that's all correct. You just typed it in wrong. So take an extra 20 seconds if you're wrong and just see, did I type it in right? And then go back to check other things. So the fastest thing to check is, did I type it in right? All right, so we got two cosecant u. I will not ask you simplify questions. 
the types of questions I will ask you will do very soon. They will all be uh, establish the identity. Well, don't thank me yet. It might be premature. So we're going to do another simplify. The good news about establishing identities is I tell you something that's true, and you have to show me why. So you already know the answer. You just have to connect them together. Uh, simplifying is ambiguous because you don't necessarily know when to stop. So we got sine squared v minus 1 divided by tangent sine minus tangent, tan v sine v minus tan v. All right, simplify. So one thing I could do is write tangent in terms of sines and cosines. That's one trick that worked before. Is tangent sine over cosine or cosine over sine? Sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. So if, if I go that route, I'll write it over here. Is there anything that gets more simple in what I just put a box around? If sine and cosine were reversed, I could cancel. But it's not. So this is probably not necessarily the best way to go originally. So let me go ahead. This is equal, but I'm going to cross it out. If it was wrong, I would go with red, but I'm going to cross it out because I don't think it's going the right direction. All right, so let's not write in terms of sines and cosines. What are my other options and my other strategies? I can multiply by conjugate over the conjugate. I could factor. Oh, there's a really important one I didn't write. Let's make this box a tiny bit bigger. I know I said it. I didn't write it in here, though. We could use all these identities. So we can use all the identities, not just the ones that turn it into sines or cosines. So there are lots of identities we need to use. Could I factor? What can I factor? I factor out tangent. That's not hard to do. So I'm going to rewrite sine squared v using exponential notation that I prefer, that you probably should prefer to, or at least you will prefer at some point. I can factor again. What can I factor here? And this factors as one of my favorite C words. Conjugate, that's right. So we have something squared minus something else squared. So that's sine minus 1 times sine plus 1. So that's conjugate factoring right there. Why was that very helpful? What can I do here? So I got sine v minus 1, sine v minus 1. They're both products, so I can cancel them out. So they cancel out to 1, not to 0. Now here's where simplifying is ambiguous. This certainly is more simple, but is it simple enough? I don't know. That's hard to tell. So we did, we certainly got out of uh, square powers of trig functions and got down to single powers. So without a doubt, it is more simple. I could write tangent as sine over cosine. 
and then multiply by the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and do that. It may or may not help us out. So tangent of the sine over cosine, we're about to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Now you have to take the entire fraction and multiply it into the one and the sine. So multiplying the sine is nice. It gives us just cosine. Sines cancel, you have cosine plus cosine over sine, which is cotangent. So which one's more simple? I don't really know exactly. They're both pretty good. I just put a box around the two that I think are probably the reasonable stopping points here. So again, I'm not going to ask you to simplify. So you're not going to have to uh, worry about where do I want you to stop. It'll be very obvious where I want you to stop. All right, any questions on the simplifying or algebra steps? Yep. Uh, one squared. I saw that it was uh, minus one, so I just put a squared onto it. didn't change anything. So then we can see that it was uh, a squared minus b squared for conjugates. And that's also why I redid our sine squared notation right there on the sine function. So I wrote as sine of v, and then I put the uh, square outside right there. So you're going to find out that you're probably going to do more serious algebra in this class than you ever did in your algebra class. And believe me, if you go on to calculus, especially calculus 2 and 3, you'll do more serious algebra in calculus 2 and 3 than you ever did in this class. So as you go forward, you keep using algebra, you just use it more. Just like when you took English in high school, you learned vocabulary words that hopefully you still use some of them or a lot of them. You don't stop using them because you're not in English 10th grade or whatever, whenever you did vocabulary last. I so, have a yes? Um, if you have something like sine minus cosine, because of the whole even odd thing, can it just, do we just ignore the minus and it's just sine plus cosine? Well, the even odd affects uh, the input to the function. Okay. So, I yeah, something like a sine minus cosine. If you wanted to use even odd, you could write it as but that may or may not be useful, depending on what's what's happening. Okay. So we're going to do some examples that use even odd, and it will be we'll use the property, but it will be a little more obvious when to use it, like why we what motivates the use of that property. And actually, the so we have two more examples before we use even odd. So all the rest of these examples, these are uh, similar to what I put on the quiz or midterm. So that'll be everything from here on will be similar to what I put on your quiz or your midterm. So these are just practice ones that we were doing before, just practicing small skills. So we're going to uh, prove the identity. So we have cosine x divided by 1 plus sine x equals 1 minus sine x divided by cos x. So I am telling you this equation is always true for all x values. What about the ones that make you divide by 0? So what is an x value right here that makes cosine of that x value 0? Cosine of what 
there's lots of answers, but cosine of what angle is zero? Pi over two, right? So pi over two would make the right side undefined. So it makes the right-hand side, RHS, undefined. What does pi over 2 do on the left over here? What is sine pi over 2? One, and wait, pi over 2 is 1. Oh, I think I messed up writing this down. That's not good. So 1 plus 1 doesn't give you undefined. I'm pretty sure I need a minus sign here. Means my notes are wrong. So how did you fix that? Good thing I randomly checked this. Can I use a pen? Pencil. Ooh, through a mechanical pencil. With it let out. All right. Now one minus sine of pi over two is one, so one minus one is zero. So now we're at least are both undefined. Hopefully this will make it even. All right. What I just wrote up here, I believe, would be false. Hopefully this makes it true. We'll find out if we cannot get to the, if we can't show they're true, usually, at least if I can't show it's true, it usually means that it's not an identity. Unfortunately, uh, if you can't show that it's true, it could mean one of two things. Either one, it's not an identity, or two, you can't prove it's an identity. So just because you can't show it's equal, it doesn't always mean that it's not equal. So hopefully, I just plugged in a value and found they weren't equal. So that's enough to say they're not an identity right there. So it should be equal for all x values. All right, so is there a complicated side, or are they pretty similar? They're pretty similar. So it doesn't look like there is one that is more complicated than the other. So let's go ahead and put, for no good reason, the right side. We'll put that away. So we're not going to touch this. We're going to make the left side look like the right side. So we're going to manipulate. the left-hand side to equal the right-hand side. So LHS, left-hand side, RHS, right-hand side. So when you mess around only on one side, you're not allowed to, for example, uh, multiply by cosine that's not going to keep it the same. So if I do want to multiply by something, what is the only number I'm allowed to multiply by and not change the value? 1. So if I multiply by a special version of 1, I won't change the value. So first of all, if we look up at the strategies, you started on the complicated side, which there wasn't really a more complicated side, so I just picked one. All right, right in terms of sine and cosine. Is it already in terms of sine and cosine? So that's out. What about add fractions with the common denominator? Do we need to add fractions? We're just looking on the left side. Is there any fraction to add? Nope. No, I don't want to keep scrolling around in my notes. Another one is multiply by conjugate over conjugate. Do you see a possible conjugate? What possible conjugate could we use? One plus sign. So we got one minus sign or a minus b. So the conjugate will be a plus b. So the conjugate would be, would be one plus sign. So we're going to try that. There's a fifth strategy. Oh, use other identities. But we got sines and cosines. There's really no other identities. Nothing squared. So nothing else is going to help us right now. No other identities. So what I'm going to do is multiply by conjugate over conjugate. I'm going to do that on the next row here. So 
So I said there's one thing we're allowed to multiply by, and it is the number one. So first of all, is what I wrote down equal to one? Yeah. Yep, same thing over itself, so that equals one. Now we're gonna go ahead and multiply out. I strongly recommend you don't distribute the non-conjugates. So do not distribute the non-conjugates. Or do not multiply the non-conjugates. So where are the non-conjugates? In the blue marker, it'll be these two right here. All right, really quickly, what is one plus sign times one minus sign? It's easy to multiply in your head if you know what you're doing. One squared minus sine squared. How did I know that? Because they're conjugates. That's the way it works. It's going to be a squared minus b squared. So how do I know not to multiply the top? The short answer is because I've done this a whole lot. So at this point, you'll have to trust me. Once you do maybe 10 or 15 problems, you'll see why it makes a lot of sense. You could distribute that if you want to. There's no harm in that. You're just going to take a little extra time. All right, so what's great about 1 minus sine squared? You might think, ah, oh, if I factor, I'll cancel the one plus sine squared, or one plus sine x, and I'll have a one minus sine x left over, which will be correct, except you'll be going back one step where we just started. So if you undo by factoring, you'll go right back to uh, this step right up here. So we don't want to go backwards. So it's not terribly obvious right now but I'm going to write an identity that we need right here. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals what number? That'll always be 1 right there. Now, I'm going to solve for 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to solve for 1 minus sine squared, which might be a little bit strange. I'm just going to subtract sine squared. So we have cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. And now we're going to use that identity right here. So 1 minus sine squared, well, that's in our denominator. 1 minus sine squared, that's cosine squared. So we took the sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 and basically solved it for 1 minus sine squared. So that let us substitute cosine squared in there. What algebra move can I make now? Can and what do I, I can definitely cancel. What do I get to cancel? So I get rid of this cosine. What does that cancel with? So I have to be careful about what in the denominator is a cancel with. So I have, basically in the denominator, I have cos times cos. So it cancels one of the cosines. So the best way, in my opinion, to cancel this, here's probably a bad move, is to just cross the whole thing out because it doesn't completely disappear. So what I'm going to do instead is turn the power, I'm going to drop it by one. So I'm going to write over top of squared will be a first power. So I recommend don't cross out the entire cosine because the whole cosine is not going away. All you're doing is losing one power of cos. So if it was cubed, I would have written squared. It was squared, so we got first power. And now I'll just rewrite the whole thing. So what was our goal originally was somewhere up here, prove they're equal, prove the identity. Uh-oh.
what's wrong with where I am and where I want to go. I'm off by a negative sign. All right. If you were taking your quiz or your exam and you got down to here and you're pretty sure you look back through everything you did, I had probably 80 eyes watching what I did, so chance of making a mistake and you not catching it is pretty low. So let's assume I didn't make any mistakes. There's probably a problem with the actual problem itself. So I'm going to put a plus here. I think that'll fix us. Not something you're allowed to do normally. If this happens, come up and ask me, hey, is this really equal? Maybe should this be a negative sign instead of a positive? OK, so we did our first identity. I like to go and put a box around when my final matches my initial. I like to put a second box around it just so I know that I'm done right there. All right, so that is our first full identity. This is how the quiz is going to feel. I will say, hey, prove that these things are the same. So you'll know they're the same. You just have to take some steps and show me. So our next one is going to use plenty of even odd properties. So we have sine squared of negative theta minus cos squared of negative theta divided by sine negative theta minus cos negative theta. equals cos theta minus sine theta. All right, what is the easy side? Is there a side that's more simple, left or right? Right, right side's easy. So at least on this one, there's no debate on what I should uh, not touch. So I'm going to leave the easy side alone. We're just going to work on the complicated side. If you really are feeling like a badass after a while, you could start on the easy side. But just to warn you, you're going to have to get a lot more creative. Your steps are not going to be obvious at all of what to do. So we're starting on the complicated side. So first of all, I need even odd properties. That's the first thing I need to do. The other thing is exponential notation is very tricky. So let's get out of this bad exponential notation. So I'm just going to rewrite with good exponential notation. So all I did was just redo our notation, didn't really do any actual algebra. All right, even odd. So most functions are odd. Cosine and secant are the evens. So I'm going to use even odd properties. So I'll write that real quick over here. Even odd cos negative theta is cos regular theta. That's our even. And sine negative theta is negative sine theta. So we're going to use the even odd properties right there. So cos is even, sine is odd. So I get negative sine regular theta squared minus cos doesn't care that theta was negative. Sine negative theta is negative sine theta. Cos negative theta is regular cos theta. So I use the even odd properties on that step right there. So in the denominator, we got negative negative. So I could factor out a negative 1, make everything positive. What about our numerator? Negative sine squared. Does the negative over here actually matter if I square it? No. So I don't need to keep that negative around. It looks like a theta when you circle it. That's not good. So now I'm going to switch back to the bad notation. Sine squared minus cos squared divided by negative 1 times 
sine plus cos. So questions on this step. All right, you can look back at your strategies if you want to, uh, but there's no tangents, cosine, or tangents, cotangents, secants, cosecants, so it's already in sines and cosines. I could multiply by conjugate over conjugate. However, there's a better algebra move to make. What algebra move can you see? I can see conjugates. Who can factor something into conjugates? I see a squared minus b squared. So what is a? a is sine theta, b is cos theta. So I got a squared minus b squared right there. So I see conjugate right here. I'm going to factor the conjugates. What is the algebra term for this right here, squared minus squared? Difference of squares? Some point in algebra, you probably heard difference of squares. No, a lot of you with blank stares. Difference of cubes, that's another good one. All right, so I'm going to factor the conjugates. So I'll write a, k, a, difference of squares. So we get sine theta plus cos theta times sine theta minus cos theta. So why was that an excellent move? Because conjugates are awesome. But what can we do now? And we get to cancel, so our sine plus cos, sine plus cos. So those completely cancel out. And we have a negative sine down here, so don't forget that. I'm going to write it as negative sine theta plus cos theta. So our divided by negative 1 changes negatives to positives and positives to negatives. And if you want to write it in order, I'd like to put positive first. We'll go ahead and write it in that order. So we got cos minus sine, hopefully. There we go, cos minus sine. So questions on your second real identity. So one of the things you should realize is I can't really ask you this question on web work. Because if I say, hey, prove these are equal, how do I, there's no real way to check your work got you from the first part to the last part. I could put a little checkbox and say, yes, I agree, but you'll pretty much agree with all of them, so that's not very useful. So for your quiz, your quiz this week, I'm going to do uh, at least one identity on your quiz. So we're in 10.3 in your textbook. So I'm going to write down, do 10.3 textbook exercises. So I'm going to write homework. This is for the quiz. So this will be for quiz number two. 10.3 book problems. They're going to be broken down into subsections. And there's a whole lot of 10.3 problems, so you're only going to do the first maybe two subsections of problems. In about another three or four days of class, you'll be able to hopefully do all of them from 10.3. There's also web work problems, so this is in addition to your web work problems. So how many book problems do you need to do? Think about the curve, and you have to decide where do you want to be on that curve for your quiz. So more book problems generally are going to move you to the right. So you got to decide you probably want to be somewhere there or above. So that might be four book problems. That might be 14 book problems. That might be 24 book problems. I don't know. So I'm not going to tell you how many to do. 